Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Lee dok from Asan Medical Center, Seoul, Korea. And uh, today my talk is imaging after flow diversion of the cerebral aneurysms. After treatment of the cerebral aneurysms, choice of the imaging tool could be strategic as the table from this recent review nicely summarized. We prefer CTA after clipping and uh, MRA after coiling with uh, occasional supplemental imaging like this. While they choose DSA or CTA for web, after flow diversion, they choose DSA or MRA as the primary choice and the CTA as a supplemental tool. Do you agree? Through this talk, I would like to share my personal experience in imaging of the flow diverted aneurysms. Purposes of imaging after flow diversion could be many. To check out the occlusion status of the aneurysm itself would be the primary purpose and to see the parent artery patency could also be very important. Sometimes you can see associated parenchymal changes. And of course, we need to check the integrity of the device itself. Not to mention, the most important point of imaging is to monitor the aneurysm occlusion status. We can quantify the occlusion status with a simple scheme like this. Complete, near complete, incomplete, and no occlusion or with O'Kelly Maruta scale A to D. When we evaluate the occlusion status, complete occlusion is easy to tell by non-feeling of the contrast media. Then how about incomplete occlusion, persistence of contrast filling or androgen volume? and the irregular inner surface of the stent-covered segment could be the imaging clues. These are our usual imaging options. In addition to them, I put X-ray radiography, CR, in the list. I will tell you why with a case review later on. DSA, of course, is the gold standard of imaging tool for the evaluation of the treatment effect. However, it has the limitation in the visualization of the aneurysm itself and the surrounding parenchyma. I think CTA is very useful in the evaluation of the aneurysm occlusion status, parent artery patency, and of course, for the evaluation of the aneurysm volume and the parenchymal changes. And how about MRA? Even though it may have some limitation in the differentiation of the thrombus and the residual secular filling, both TOF and the contrast-enhanced MRA may show sufficient information in the visualization of the occlusion status, aneurysm sac, and the parenchymal changes. Let's check out the imaging characteristics of those imaging tools through the real cases from a sub-medical center. A large left cavernous ICA aneurysm case, we could achieve a good stagnation after flow diversion. We were happy with the initial angiographic results. We obtained the TOF MRA the next day. The images seem to provide not much information except for good parent artery flow-related signals. However, when you look at the images in detail, you can tell more. The stent mesh is seen as a ring-shaped signal void structure. How about these linear signals out of the mesh? Yes, there are signals from the flow outside the mesh, meaning poor wall opposition, obvious bad wall contact at this curvature. You can see the flow signal in the aneurysm lumen here. Fortunately, the wall opposition at the distal segment seemed relatively good. On three months follow-up CTA, 
We can easily identify residual filling here. There is not much change of the androgen volume. On six months follow-up CTA, the residual filling was not seen anymore. We thought the initial treatment response was not bad. However, on his one-year follow-up DSA, we could note persistent contrast filling here. And please note the thin layer-like filling of the contrast media here and here. I agree that these contrast feelings are due to my procedural failure of poor wall opposition. However, I'm pretty sure that this opacity, a permeative pattern of contrast feeling, is due to incomplete occlusion of the aneurysm sac. Do we need to consider retreatment for this? What is your opinion? The decision actually was not that difficult since the CT scan obtained on the same day showed a significant contraction of the aneurysm sac like this. I'm sure that nobody will agree any further intervention for this situation. So we put the patient on further CTA follow-up. On the second year follow-up CT scan, the aneurysm itself is contracting more. When you look into the source images closely, however, the persistent feeling is still visible like this. Curved MPL views nicely demonstrates good parentality patency and shows the minimal residual neck feeling and the lesion caused by poor wall opposition at the posterior genu portion of the cavernous segment of the ICA as well. We thought performing another DSA would not provide further additional information at this point. So we decided to put the patient on another one-year follow-up CTA. I think the information on CTA is enough for the treatment outcome evaluation and the decision making in this particular case. Then how about this case? Another patient with a cavernous ICA aneurysm showing heterogeneous flow signal in the sac. 3D angiogram, two aneurysms at the same segment. We performed the flow diversion with the pipeline flex system. Stagnation of the contrast media right after the procedure. This is the image of the TOF MRA obtained the next day even though the covered parent artery shows decreased flow signal like this, we could see good stent patency, even though it was impossible for us to tell whether the high signal in the aneurysm sac was thrombosis or flow-related signal enhancement. We were quite sure that the patch high signal at the inflow zone of the aneurysm neck was from the persistent jet flow. When we reviewed the source image carefully, we were able to identify some characteristic early image changes on the MRA. Tram track like a parallel dark signal structure from the tubular mesh of the flow diverter, decreased intracircular flow and bidirectional residual jet flow signals. This is the subtracted CTA images obtained three months later. This is the subtraction artifact from the flow diverter. Yes, this nodular structure must be the residual persistent filling space in the sac. Focal peristand contrast filling could be seen better on the source images like this. Sometimes it could be a little difficult to identify the thrombosed androgen sac margin on the CTA. We put the patient on six months follow-up MRA. This is the frontal projection of the TOF MRA. The flow signal in the proximal vertical segment of the artery showed a very good instant flow signal. However, the signal in the distal segment was void like this. This could be the signal saturation effect along the horizontal segment of the artery. We obtained the contrast enhanced MRA too. Better demonstration of the 
patent ICA and uh, we were able to tell that there was no further secular filling of the contrast media. We put the patient on second ear follow, very good treatment response on contrast enhanced MRA. And this is the TOF MRA finding. On its source images, we were able to tell the sac was collapsed. We could confirm complete treatment response of the large aneurysm by the flow divergent therapy. You will agree that the DSA would not be necessary in the evaluation of a treatment response practically. I think CTA could also show enough information in the long-term follow-up image when the aneurysm shows contraction of its volume like this. The third case I prepared is a distal vertebral artery fusiform aneurysm just below the angled segment. Flow diversion was done. Check out the device placed along the curvature here. DSA finding. The patient was discharged without any event. However, on the CTA obtained three months after the procedure showed persistent energy feeling like this. We were frightened, not by the poor occlusion, but by the shortened migrated device. We found the distal segment of the device in the aneurysm set. Shamefully, when we went back and reviewed the ML images obtained on POD1 again, we could see the already migrated stent with the source images. This definitely was neglected by us. Furthermore, when we looked into the skull views, the shortening was also seen clearly. We need to check the skull view carefully, especially in case of posterior circulation lesions, where device migration is an issue. Angiography was done. See the distal margin of the shortened device here in the sac. As you know, device migration could result in a disastrous outcome. We need to keep in mind that this issue, especially in the posterior circulation lesion. We did the retreatment with another flow diverter three months after that. This is our imaging scheme at Assam Medical Center as of now. We obtained the DWI and the TOF MRA the next day. After that, to check for unexpected finding, we put the patient on early CTA follow-up at one to three months post the procedure. And then to see the initial occlusion status, we perform CTA or MRA at six to nine months post procedure. We rely heavily on CTA, except in limited situation of having combined coil mass or high liscus in use of iodine contrast media. We try to perform DSA at 12 months after the procedure for the confirmation of the occlusion status, CTA or MRA thereafter if needed. Once again, there are various purposes of imaging after flow diversion. And I would like to conclude my talk by adding some useful comments which I did not cover in the talk. Even though CTA is a preferred imaging tool, MRA would be a good alternative imaging tool in case of impaired renal function. Quantification of the aneurysm volume reduction with the CTA or MRA, which cannot be done with the DSA, would be a good indicator of good treatment response. Consider modification of follow-up interval according to the aneurysm nature and its treatment response. The issue of instant stenosis should also be considered during follow-up. DSA still is a good standard for the evaluation of treatment response as of now. However, it could be skippable and uh, replaced by CTA or MRA in many of the situations. 
Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.